Each and every single day is a precious time for hunting, but when it snows, now that's where the magic comes in. I have been planning to share my experiences about flintlock shooting and hunting for a while now, but the beautiful winter we have this year just offered me the perfect background for such lecture. It's mid-January and the location is the mountains close to Budapest. A good hunt always starts while it's still dark, hoping to catch the wild boar returning from the fields. These are the very first lights of the dawn and I'm stalking with my faithful companion, my Pedersoli flintlock Jäger rifle. Stalking a wild boar close is not an easy task, as probably it is the most clever game of the woods of Hungary. I was lucky that morning to see one, but could not get a good aim on him. The big male wild boar did not sense me, but did not stop either. Disappeared in the bushes. Later I tried to follow its footprints in the fresh snow, but backwind prevented me from catching him. Regardless if you can shoot or not, the winter forest is just beautiful. Nearly nothing is better than taking a long walk alone in the virgin snow. The powder-like snowflakes hide the noise of your feet, so it is an exceptional occasion to submerge into the silence of nature. It has been a long time since I have been waiting for this day. The previous winter was nothing comparable, and I'm afraid that due to the effects of the global warning, we will have less and less chance to enjoy the true winters. This area is just excellent for European big game. We have good population of red deer, raw deer, mouflon and wild boar here, and thanks to following the rules of sustainable hunting and professional game management, their population is very healthy and growing. Now I'm following the trail of a single raw deer. As the snowfall just ended before dawn, it cannot be too far. Its footprints are easy to trace. It did not take too long to catch him. I had good wind and the road is just not as cautious as the wild boar. The distance was not more than a hundred meters, still good for an open side shot, but first I had to be sure that it's a female. At this time of the year the male is growing its antlers, so until the 15th of April they are in safety. It was a male, so for me not an option for today, but I tried my aim just to see how it looked like in the sides. It was already 9 o'clock, pretty much the end of the morning hunting time, but even if I did not shoot anything, I have to say that I did not miss anything from that morning. In most cases, a good recording can be an excellent trophy as well. I just love flintlock firearms, and to tell you the truth, this is the part of black powder shooting I enjoy most. I also compete and also hunt with flintlocks. The information I'm sharing with you today is not new, it's not rocket science either. This is something that I learned from more experienced shooters on international competitions and this is exactly what I'm using on the shooting range and this is exactly what I'm using while I'm hunting. It is important because if you have a fast ignition then you have an accurate rifle or an accurate pistol. I have won quite a few medals on international competitions, on European Championships and World Championships with black powder firearms, but in fact I'm most proud of the medals that I won with flintlock rifles. I have five of them. Silver and bronze medals, one in the team event of uh, Pennsylvania, which is the offhand 50 meter flintlock rifle discipline. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not really showing these medals to you to show off, but I'm showing this to make you understand that uh, if you learn the proper skills of uh, managing your flintlock, then you will be able to achieve anything with that rifle. So you can learn it slowly, as I did. But if you listen to what I say, then probably you'll find some information that you can use in your private shooting life, and it will make you more successful. Probably not everything here will work for everybody, but probably they will give you a guideline to fear a beginner, which will help you in improving. 
When you're firing a rifle, your brain first sends an information to your trigger finger to pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger, the firing mechanism will start to work. This will take some time. When the firing mechanism starts to work, first your hammer will fall. When the hammer fell on the steel, it will shave hot metal particles from the steel and these will fall into the pan, they will ignite the priming powder and through the touch hole the priming powder will ignite the main charge. And then the bullet will start to move in the bore and it will leave the muzzle and then it will hit the center of the target. This is a long process, it takes time. And I'm going to only talk about one single part of this problem or this process which will be the work of the lock. How we can have a fast and secure ignition? These are the most important questions of flintlock rifle shooting. And which one is important? Well, both are. For the hunters, the secure ignition is probably more important. And for the sport shooter, the fast ignition, that's the key element of accuracy. Reducing the lock time is something that everybody can learn. But first, we must have a good lock with proper spring forces and properly hardened frizzen with a good angle. Unfortunately, most of the cheap locks will fail to deliver the quality we need here. So if you can buy your flintlock from a premium manufacturer. It is also important to have the proper size flint in the jaws of the hammer. Why? First of all, because if the stone is too small, it's not wide enough, then it will wear only one part of the frizzle. Second, it must be long enough. If it's not long enough, then it will hit the bottom of the frizzle, which means also that only the bottom part will be worn, the bottom part will be used. Second, it's not so good if we are not using the upper part of the frizzle, because the longer the flint travels on the surface of the steel, the more sparks you will have. How can we determine the exact size of the flint that we need? First of all, it must be just as wide as the steel. The length, you can check it easily. Close your pen, put your cock in half cock position, and in this position, the edge of the flint must be say, maximum one millimeter from the frizzle. It is also an important question how we secure the stone in the jaws of the hammer. There are two ways to secure it. You can do it with a lead sheet or you can do it with leather. Both can work well. You have to decide which one you prefer. You have also two options regarding the stone as well. You can use synthetic stone and you can use natural flint. Well, both work. It does not matter which one we use unless they are sharp. Let me show you now how to sharpen your flint. For the synthetic and for the natural stone you have to use different methods. I'm going to show you both. When you have to sharpen the stone, usually the rifle is loaded, so we have to be extremely careful. So first of all, point the muzzle into a safe direction. Second, open your frizzle, put the hammer in half cock, safety position. Wipe out all the priming powder from the pen. Obstruct the channel with a brass rod. And now we can start sharpening the flint. For sharpening the flint you need a very useful little tool. It's a brass rod. Let me show you how to use it. You can see that the edge of the flint is not sharp anymore. So we will have to sharpen it, resharpen it. Now I'm going to use the brass rod. Just put it where we have protruding, protruding parts. And chip the flakes. And we have a beautiful spark again. When I'm shooting competition, I need as many sparks as possible. So after each and every single shot, I have another method for just putting back the razor sharp edge to the, to the flint. For this purpose, I use a small diamond file. It's a very cheap thing. You can buy it for nearly nothing at any store. After every single shot, I clean my stone with a rack saturated with alcohol. Also, I clean the frizzle with a rack saturated with alcohol and then I use my small diamond file just to give back the razor sharp edge of the stone with a few loops. And now you will have a beautiful spark. The height of the stone is also very important because if it starts its way on the top of the frizzle, then it will generate much more sparks. But how can we achieve this? The first Possibility is if when you're using your stone with bevel down, then change it to bevel up. This will add, let's say, in this case, three millimeter more. You have another second chance as well. I usually wrap my stone in leather, and if I want to raise it to a higher level, I just add some leather spacers under the stone. And now I have three more millimeters in height. 
You will also have to pay attention to the angle of the edge of the flint, as if it is parallel with the frizzon, it will not cut off any metal chips, of course. Sharpening the synthetic stone needs a different approach. The diamond file can work in this case as well. Well, what I have is a metal plate with diamond powder on it. Sharpening the synthetic stone is not a hard job. Apply some water on the surface of the diamond file and just give it some grinding. It will spark again beautifully. So in this way you will be able to use the synthetic stone until the length is okay. Let me talk a bit about priming powders and priming flasks. We have been using this kind of brass flasks for decades and I never had any problem with that, tell you the truth. But I heard that there were some accidents while using this kind of primer. When this is loaded with 30, 40, 50 grams of uh, priming powder, this is a hand grenade in your hand if it's ignited. If you are using a tightly sealed brass priming flask like this, then you just have to remove the plug, unscrew it and replace it with some kind of a cork plug or something. Now you can prevent pressure buildup if anything happens. Or you can change to a plastic primer flask. This is also very easy to open. You can see that it will just blow the cap off at one or two bars. This is safe enough for us. Let me talk a bit about the quality of the priming powder. When you are shooting a championship, of course you need a fast ignition. For these cases, just choose the finest available powder. My priming powder for the championships is the Swiss Zero B, which is a beautiful fast burning powder. Never use it for a main charge, but use it only for pen priming. But if I'm hunting, I choose something different. I go for the 4FG powders. I have two reasons for this. First of all, if your pen and your frizzon is not closing properly, then it can leak out, the zero B can leak out slowly from your pen and your rifle will misfire when you see that beautiful game. Second, if the weather is moist, like when it's snowing or raining, then the smaller your particles are, the easier they will absorb the moisture from the air. So the 4F powder or even the 3F powder can be a much more secure choice than the Swiss zero B if you're hunting. It is also important how you are placing the priming powder in your pen. The key of the fast ignition is a clean touch hole, so after every single shot, clean it with a breast rod. Second, never stuff the priming powder into the touch hole, just place it close to it. And remember, you don't need too much priming powder, as it will slow down your ignition. Let me tell you a few things about the corn size of the main powder charge as well. According to my experience, each and every single flintlock firearm shoots better, it's more accurate and the ignition is faster with larger grain size. So for example, for my 45 caliber percussion rifles I use 3F powder, but for my flintlock 45 caliber rifles I use 2F powder. Moisture is a great enemy of the flintlock hunter, so learning how to waterproof your rifle is an important skill. Let me show you how I do it. Let's check how moisture can get to your charge. First it can enter through the muzzle, so you have to protect it. The best thing is to have one or two condoms in your hunting bag. Be prepared for everything and also be prepared for a good story to tell to your wife when she discovers it. Believe me, been there, done that. But uh, it's really useful, so have one or two. Never stuff anything into your bore to prevent water getting in. Just that condom will be enough. The second thing moisture will do is attacking your priming pen. How it is done? When you're hunting in rain, then the channel of the wood of the stock and the barrel will just lead the water drops directly into your pen. And if your pen is not sealed, then it will moisten your priming powder and of course through the touch hole it can also enter the main charge. You have to, we have to prevent this. Uh, my way of preventing this is using beeswax to seal the priming pen and the bottom of the frizzon. Let me show you how it's done. Take a piece of beeswax and wrap the edges of the pen. And now you have a waterproof pen. You can also seal the gap between the barrel and the frizzon with a small piece of beeswax. Also use a piece of beeswax to obstruct the channel between wood and the barrel. There are also some beautifully advanced locks that are designed to be waterproof. 
For example, here is the Pedersoni Mortimer rifle, beautiful rifle for 100 meter flintlock shooting. You can see that the lock is built, that it has two rain channels. The raindrops will move all along in the channel between the barrel and the stock, but when they reach the priming pan, this small channel here just prevents them from getting into the priming powder. Whatever you do, your frizzant will wear. There are certain ways to reharden it and to make it work again, but unfortunately it will not last forever, so be prepared that at one certain point you will have to replace it. And it's natural. It's not difficult, isn't it? But believe me, whenever you attend an important competition or you go for hunting, then always start with a new flint in the jaws. The Hungarian regulations for back powder hunting include rules for the minimum muzzle energy for hunting specific species. According to our hunting related laws, we must reach 2500 joules of muzzle energy for red deer, mouflon and wild boar, and a minimum of 1000 joules for roe deer. My load for the Petersoli Jäger rifle is 100 grains of 2S Swiss powder and a 320 grain Lee rear bullet. It is deadly accurate from my slow twist bore and delivers enough killing power for any game. Please allow me to introduce you my other faithful companion, my 4x4 called Little Red Riding Hood. Well, she's already in the major class, as she's close to 30 years, but still running perfectly. How can a perfect day get even better? Well, like this. The snowfall arrived, putting the cherry on my cake. The afternoon plan was to sit on a high stand close to a junction of trails used by various games. Although the wind was strong, I had a good chance to encounter roe deer or boar. The twist rate of my 54 caliber boar is one turn in 66 inches, usually recommended only for round ball. The 320 grain Lee real bullet, however, is short enough to stabilize with slow pitch as well. Just after 3 p.m. a female roe deer jumped out of the bushes from the right. Walked gently in front of us, offering a beautiful target. I decided to wait a bit to see if she's alone or with a fawn or buck. I know I could shoot immediately, but sometimes I feel like it's right to check if the game is single or not. So I let her walk around a few minutes before I decided to place my sights on the game. The roe deer collapsed immediately right at the spot. That's what I call a clean kill. The lock of my rifle was as quick as possible and my shot was accurate as well. This beautiful hunting day is a good proof that a well-prepared flintlock rifle can do the job in moist weather as well.